So what's it like to drive a fully electric classic that was never intended to be electric? Today I'll show you. But before I do, let's talk about the power that we need to propel the van. This is my solar array, and I'm fortunate enough to have one that belts out a lot of power, uh, even on a winter's day here in California. But let's also talk, before we go for a drive today, about the critics, about the people who say, oh, well, electric vehicles are just as polluting as gasoline ones. Not so, not at all, especially when you consider that in the U.S., 10% of grid electricity is already wind and solar and growing very quickly, and it's way higher than that in California. There's also a high overlap between people driving electric vehicles and either purchasing solar power and wind power from the grid or operating and owning their own array at home. Okay, I think the van's all topped up, so let's get going. So here we are going up a pretty steep gradient in third and that's simply because this electric motor has so much torque that you can really leave it in third for almost all climbs it's only the really steep stuff where you would even need to use second and unless you're trying to be the first person to ever drive a classic vw straight up a wall you never need to use first at all So what about downhill? Well, on most gradients, just having the bus in third, pretty much as you do all the time, is great because I tend to just use the maximum regen option. Um, and what that enables you to do is cruise down, barely even using the brakes and putting quite a lot of energy back into the battery. Let me show you what I mean about taking off in third. So first of all, no need for the clutch. The electric motor isn't spinning when there's no power being applied, so no, no use of the clutch at all. As you'll see, we're on a bit of a hill here, setting off in third. Okay, off we go. And that's 30 miles an hour. Now the 37 kilowatt hour battery pack is good for about 100 miles real world range. So that's some hills, some stops, some starts, some freeway, some uh, downtown. So every time the bus gets a full charge, I know I'm gonna get a solid 100 miles before I need to charge up again. And the cool thing about the kits from EV West is that if you did ever want more range, you can just add more batteries. I chose not to because I wanted that nice clean delivery load area and nice simple layout in the back. But if I could put a battery box on the back and double the range, that would be an option. You know, I have a little rant about solar, but why don't I just double down and talk about batteries as well? Yes. A certain amount of carbon is used to generate batteries. Yes, those batteries have to travel thousands of miles before that carbon debt is paid off. But the interesting thing is that these batteries are now in so many cars that real data is being acquired. And it's becoming clear that these batteries are good for 500,000 miles. I'm also involved in projects that I'll do a video about another time for second life batteries. That's where you take EV batteries that are no longer good for an electric vehicle but are perfectly good for what they call stationary applications where they can continue to pump out enough energy for homes and buildings and grid applications so these things are going to be good for 
decades to come. And even then, there are recycling options. I'll post a video in the link below uh, from Fully Charged that talks about some of the um, cutting edge lithium ion battery recycling firms that are now emerging. Now, as I talked about in the other video, this van has brand new disc brakes on the front and brand new drums on the back. But it is still 1970s era VW design stuff. They're not the best brakes in the world. That said, I'm on this steep grade right now in full regen mode, so maximum regen. And look, I'm cruising safely down this steep hill. I'm not even touching the brake. So when you think about a vehicle that wasn't intended to be electrified, and then you take, in this case, an EV West kit installed brilliantly by the EV SoCal guys. The, the old technology combined with the new actually works really well. I'm in third gear right now. I took off back there at a stop sign in third gear again, no clutch. I'm gonna come down here to uh, the main road, turn right and point straight uphill. Again, no clutch, no changing gear. Third gear, will really deal with pretty much everything you need unless, as I mentioned, you're going up really steep hills or going down really steep hills. The only time you might need fourth is on the freeway if you want to get above 70 miles an hour, which it will happily do. So when might you want to use second and little to no regen? Well, I'm taking us down to this little downtown area. Number one, because I fancy a coffee. They have a great Mexican mocha down here. But number two, I want to show you the benefit of second gear and no to low regen in a downtown uh, surface streets scenario. Now, it's not uncommon sometimes that you're sitting there at a stop sign or maybe you're at the lights and someone looks at your old 72 bus and thinks, oh, I'll just cut around that guy. And that's when I like to do this. No regen, second gear, go. So I hope you enjoyed the overview today of what it's like to drive a 72 bus that's got a full electric conversion. Uh, it's a ton of fun to drive. It's been a fantastic project and I'm looking forward to doing more. Sorry for the wind noise, but I wanted to make sure you could hear, hear the, uh, the whir coming out of the back of um, a vehicle that should have a very noisy flat four VW sound to it. Sorry also, I guess, for getting on my high horse a bit about solar and batteries, but as someone who's been working in the industry for as long as I have, you just have to take these misconceptions and tackle them head on. So I'll publish more projects as uh, the months go by and continue to focus on things that inspire me and things that convince me that a better world awaits. Thanks for watching.